Hello, I'm Margot Van Etten. I'm one of the pastoral ministers at St. Monica's Catholic Church. And I want to talk to you a little bit and then uh, do a little bit working with some of the things that have been coming up for people lately. Um, I've received communications from people who are saying things like, gosh, you know, yesterday I was just overwhelmed with sadness and I felt really depressed and I don't know why. Nobody, I don't know anyone who's sick. Or, you know, I've got such a short fuse. I'm really feeling a lot of anger. What gives? Um, or more, very common, I'm feeling so much anxiety. I'm so afraid. These are what a lot of spiritual uh, people call afflictive emotions. Uh, two of them are actually seven deadly sins, which means the same thing. It's something that causes you suffering. But you shouldn't beat yourself up about feeling these and you shouldn't be too puzzled. And here's why. This is normal. We are all going through a huge process of loss and of grieving. Even before you get around to whether anybody you know is sick, we've all lost what's normal. We've all lost a lot of the physical contact with other people. Many people have lost jobs, whether they've either totally lost them or even telecommuting. You've lost that daily interaction. You've lost your routine. Most of all, we've totally lost our sense of control over our world. And that manifests in a lot of ways, whether it's anxiety or sadness, or madly buying toilet paper. How do you get control? So we're going to work a little bit with these and find ways to kind of relieve ourselves uh, of all of this and help the Lord to help us. You know, the Lord can offer gifts, but if your hand is clenched like this, you can't receive them. And so we're going to try to unclench our hands and receive what the Lord wants to give us and then give him the things that we need for him to take care of. So one more thought before we start. Um, I had a friend who was really, really good at parsing things out. And she used to say, with any problem, there are two parts. Before you even get to whether there's a solution or not, there's the problem itself and there's objecting to the problem. So say I walk out in the morning on my way to work, back when we were all working, I have a flat tire. I can spend a few minutes fuming and ranting because I'm objecting to have the flat tire and that hinders me from what I need to do, which is go call, get somebody to help me with the flat tire. And so the first thing we're gonna work on today is letting go of the objection. There's one more thing we need to consider too, is that we're not only experiencing our own sadness, grief, anger, fear, or anxiety. We certainly see stuff on the news that raises that up. We have our own concerns that raise that up, but we are all also interconnected. And right now, the whole spiritual and psychological atmosphere, not just of our town or our, our state or our country, but the whole world is filled with these feelings. They're floating in the air like ink in water. And so it's not surprising that we're all catching a little bit of it. And so let's just start by thinking about, first of all, how do we notice what's happening? If you're like me, you have to be halfway through having a really bad day or telling yourself all sto sorts of stories about what a jerk so-and-so is or what a terrible thing this is. And then suddenly you realize, wait a minute, you know, I'm sad or I'm angry or well, I'm really feeling anxious. So the first thing we have to do is notice what's happening and not be carried along by it. So today what we're going to spend a little bit of time doing is putting ourselves in the presence of God, noticing what is happening and then offering that up to the Lord. We're going to do it sitting today. But for some people, it's easier if you're walking around or, I don't know, washing a dish or doing something that doesn't require much con conversation. 
but is still physically active. For today, however, we're all going to be sitting and then you can play with it in whatever way works for you. So take a moment and just let's get into a comfortable seated position, uh, making yourself comfortable and just relax. I mean, don't sit at full attention, but on the other hand, if you can keep your back straight, that will help you keep a little more focused. And just begin by noticing your breathing, just as we did a few weeks ago. Receiving the gift of breath and life from God. Breathing out, releasing ourselves into God's presence. Breathing in the gift of breath, of life, of spirit. Breathing out, opening, letting go. Breathing in the gift of this present moment because it's the only moment we have. Breathing out any sense of grasping. Breathing in that gift of air which we all share. Breathing out, releasing and letting go. Breathing in, breathing out. Notice the feeling of the breath passing through your nostrils, down into your lungs, down into your very center. Receiving God's gift of life and of breath. And as you breathe out, letting everything soften, letting ourselves relax into God's presence, breathing in, the Lord is with us, breathing out, allowing ourselves to be with him, breathing in, the gift of God's love. And as we breathe out, noticing any place that might feel tense or tight. And as we breathe out, just allowing that tension to float out into the air. Breathing in the warmth and light of God's presence. Breathing out and softening into that presence. Breathing in. Yes, Lord. Noticing any place that feels tight and allowing that place to soften, breathing the tension out as we breathe out. The Lord is here. Breathing in, be still and know that I am God. Breathing out, yes, Lord. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in the warmth and love of God's presence. Breathing out, letting go. And as we breathe now, we're going to use a variation of the ancient Jesus prayer. Breathing in as we receive Lord Jesus, or if your breath is longer, Lord Jesus Christ. So breathing in, Lord Jesus. Just breathing in that presence of Lord. 
And as we breathe out, I trust in you. Lord Jesus, I trust in you. Lord Jesus, I trust in you. And as we breathe in, again, breathing in that warmth, that love, the presence of God in our lives at every moment. And breathing out, just breathing any desire for control, any need to dictate how things should turn out into God's hands. Lord Jesus, and then breathing out, I trust you. And if that starts to seem like too many words, you can just breathe in, Jesus. And as you breathe out, Lord. Jesus, Lord, Jesus, Lord. And as you're doing this, just sitting for the moment, if anything comes up in your mind, don't fight it, don't resist it. Just allow it to float out on your brow, out breath into God's hands. Jesus, Lord, breathe again, Jesus, Lord. Jesus. Lord. As you breathe out all of that concern, you can let your body relax a little every time you breathe out. Jesus. Jesus, Lord. And when you're ready to draw your meditation, your prayer to an end, or if you've set a timer, when your timer goes off. Let's conclude by just wrapping up that whole offering and acceptance into the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen.
take a little time with this. Maybe make it something you do in the evening when you're trying to wind down before you go to sleep. Try doing it for maybe 10 minutes at a time and just see how this helps you to open to the Lord. He's with us at every moment, always offering us comfort, consolation, support, and his love. All we have to do is accept it.